Today, we are going to look at a body vis brain builder about joints and gout. Gout, a form of inflammatory arthritis resulting from an excess of uric acid in the blood, most often flares up around affected joints in the middle of the night or early in the morning. In this brain builder, we will discuss the different types of joint anatomy and how gout affects them. A joint is defined as a junction of two or more bones. There are three types of joints, classified according to their range of motion or structure. This brain builder will cover the structure of joints and how they are classified. Fibrous joints have fibrous connective tissue between connecting bones. These joints have little to no range of movement and include joints such as suture, syndesmosis, and gomphosis joints. Suture joints have minimal connective tissue. The most common example of this type of joint are the bones of the cranium. In syndesmosis joints, there is more connective tissue between connecting bones. An example of this joint would be the tibia and the fibula. Gomphosis joints are unique and found between a tooth and alveolus or tooth socket. Cartilaginous joints contain some form of cartilage between two connecting bones. These types of joints have minimal range of movement and encompass two types, synchondrosis and symphysis. Synchondrosis joints, such as the joint between a rib and the sternum, contain hyaline cartilage. The pubic symphysis is a great example of a symphysis joint, where fibrous cartilage connects two bones. Synovial joints exhibit the greatest range of motion. These joints have a joint cavity filled with synovial fluid. They contain articulating cartilage and have an articular capsule. This capsule is made of connective tissue and lined with a synovial membrane, which secretes synovial fluid. Synovial fluid nourishes and lubricates the joint cartilage. This joint may have accessory structures such as bursa, tendons, ligaments, menisci, cartilages, and fat pads. Gout is far more commonly developed among men than women, five times higher to be exact. Males develop gout at an earlier age than women as well, typically around or after the age of 40. Women, if they do develop gout, will typically experience the disease after menopause. Let's take a look at the symptoms, causes, and treatments for gout and then give a patient example. Gout announces its presence with a bang, sudden, intense pain, accompanied by swollen, red joints that feel like they're on fire. This discomfort peaks around 6 to 12 hours after the symptoms first strike, making even the lightest touch unbearable. Initially, gout tends to affect one joint, almost always the big toe's base. But as time goes on, your elbows, knuckles, and knees may also show similar signs of pain. Surprisingly, hips and shoulders are usually unaffected. Symptoms come and go in waves, with flare-ups lasting one to two weeks, followed by periods of remission. Gout's high uric acid levels can lead to kidney stones or, in rare cases, kidney damage during a flare-up. Certain lifestyle factors like fatigue, alcohol, protein-rich foods, lack of exercise, and stress often kickstart the pain symptoms. Let's break down what we know. Gout happens when purines, substances found in many foods and tissues, get broken down into uric acid. Now, uric acid is usually filtered out of your blood by your kidneys, but sometimes they don't quite keep up allowing uric acid levels to soar. When that happens, uric acid forms tiny, needle-shaped crystals, causing trouble in both your kidneys and your joints. These crystals end up in your joint's synovial fluid, sparking painful gout flare-ups. It is important to note that not everyone with high uric acid levels gets gout, but certain factors can increase your chances. The consumption of alcohol, drinks with high levels of fructose, liver and game meats, Dried legumes and certain seafoods all increase your risk. Obesity, diuretics, low-dose aspirin, and drugs used after organ transplants can all increase your uric acid levels. Diagnosing gout can only be done accurately during a flare. A physician must take blood samples to determine your uric acid concentration. X-rays may also be necessary. Treatment for gout focuses on three key goals, preventing flare-ups, easing pain, and reducing the risk of kidney stone formation. Lifestyle changes are often recommended by physicians to help achieve these goals. Finally, let's take a look at a patient example. You receive your patient's file and take a look. Age, 55. Sex, male. Chief complaints, painful joint swelling in the hands and feet. 
You invite the patient into your office for an examination. Your patient frequently experiences painful joint swelling in the middle of the night around their knuckles and ankles. You are able to meet with your patient in the morning while they are having a mild flare-up. You run some tests on a blood sample taken to check the patient's uric acid levels. The results confirm abnormally high uric acid levels. You begin to discuss the lifestyle changes that could alleviate these symptoms with your patient. Limiting their alcohol consumption, eating healthy, and increasing exercise are number one priorities. After working with your patient, they notice that their flare-up pain is significantly reduced as they lose weight and watch what they eat. This has been a classic example of gout. Thank you for watching this Brain Builder video. Please like and subscribe to our BodyVis channel or if you are new at BodyVis, check out our other anatomy resources and schedule a demo at bodyviz.com.